This is a reading of Petros' Secret by Mark Evans. The story of a young Greek boy who grows up on a Greek island with a secret that will haunt him for the rest of his life. And now, Petros' Secret. Petros was not quite nine when his father had died. He could barely remember the man and didn't really care to. What he did remember was that his father was never home. A fisherman by trade, Stavros Konstantinos, spent his days at sea and his nights in the local taverna, drinking ouzo and carrying on with his friends. The pungent licorice smell on his breath was one of the few memories that Petros had of his father. As was the fate of so many other fishermen from their island village, Stavros Konstantinos was the victim of a sudden storm at sea. Petros did not plan to follow in his father's footsteps. His mother, Katerina, quietly cared for the house and garden. She donned the black dress that so many Greek women wear when they become widowed. Her life had never been an easy one. She worked from sun up until sundown, tending to the household chores, then going to work in the fish factory, cleaning and packaging another day's catch. Before her husband's death, she was also expected to care for him when he got home, if he got home. This burly, bad-tempered seaman often chose Uzo with his friends over dinner with his family. In some ways, his death came as a relief to both of them. It was now summer, and the sun warmed the air and spread its glow on the sea like a million flickering candles. Wild flowers bloomed on the hillsides, and the smells of summer gave new life to this otherwise sleepy fishing village. Petros was now 15. He spent his mornings milking the goats, then walking them, first through the narrow winding streets of the village, and then up through the mountain paths. As they foraged for food, their tiny bells could be heard quietly in the distance over a mile away. Filtered through the pine trees, the turquoise sea stared up at the mountain trails. Petros was content to be alone with his goats and took comfort from their companionship. Each of the twelve had its own name and its own special personality. The hike back down the mountain signaled the end of this special time, but also meant the beginning of a new day's adventure. The other boys in the village spent their summer days aboard their father's fishing boats, learning the trade that had been passed down from generation to generation. Mending the nets and learning how to toss and retrieve them was the life to which these young men could look forward. Oddly enough, the thing that Petros loved most in his life was the sea, yet he had no desire to become a fisherman like his father. He loved to swim and to fish from the shore, and he especially enjoyed fishing underwater with his spear. He was good at it, too, yet he had no desire to work for the fishing boats. Because of his father's fate, most people could understand why. But as a result, he had no close friends. He was content with his goats, his chickens, and his garden and he was content with the special relationship with the sea. His life was quiet and serene, and he liked it that way. The small village sat right on the harbor. Its narrow winding streets and its whitewashed houses, with mostly blue doors and red tiled roofs, climbed partway up the hillside. Beyond that, very few people bothered to go. While all of the other boys went out to sea, Petros had lots of time to explore. He knew the island better than anyone else who lived there. He knew every trail, every tree, every nook and cranny on the island. He knew the best places to swim and the best places to fish. It was a small island, but he knew places where no one else had ever been. There were two small villages on the island. His was on the east side, and another very small one on the southwestern tip. He knew the faces, if not the names, of almost all of the island's nearly 200 inhabitants. This particular summer afternoon was about to change his whole life, though he could never have guessed how or why. He set out alone from the village, winding his way through the narrow cobblestone streets, sometimes kicking a rock as he walked, sometimes being followed by one of the friendly town dogs, who really didn't seem to belong to anyone in particular. He had names for all of them, but the big tan-colored dog, who he called Brown Dog, was the one who most often followed him. 
On past the village, he followed one of the familiar goat paths to a pass in the mountain between two huge boulders. Beyond the boulders, he could see the other side of the island. Other than the small village to the south, this side of the island was all his. He looked out over the turquoise-colored water. From here, he could see all of his favorite coves and beaches. He could see the big black rock, a small mountain, really, that grew out of the sea like a dorsal fin of a gigantic sea creature. The waters around the rock teemed with large fish and was his favorite place for spearfishing. This rock was also the place where the secret place was. He followed the trail slightly to the north until the slope leveled off to a grassy plain. In a few minutes, he would arrive at the beach, which he called Sicily Amas, or fine sand. As always, his footprints were the only ones to make an impression in the soft, white, warm sand. He threw off his clothes and dove through the waves into the crystal clear waters, just as he had done hundreds of times before. He was truly alone and free. He swam for a while and then later walked down the beach, the sun spreading its warmth on his already tanned body. He often found things on the beach mostly floats from fishing nets and other things tossed overboard from boats. There was always the occasional crab scurrying by as well. Today, however, he noticed something shining in the distance near the water's edge. Possibly a mirror or a piece of glass, he guessed. When he finally reached it, he realized immediately what it was. He had seen them before, but had never used one. It was a diver's mask. Little did he know that this small discovery would change his life forever. The waters of the Greek islands are known for their pristine clarity and their turquoise color. Petros often swam with his eyes open underwater. Though things appeared somewhat blurry, he never had trouble finding and spearing fish. Even so, he was very anxious to try the mask. He walked down the beach and climbed over the rocks, which led to a secluded, rocky cove on the other side. He tried on the mask and adjusted the strap. It seemed to fit perfectly. He entered the water, and within seconds he rushed to the surface and gasped for air. The experience had been such a surprise, and he had simply not been fully prepared for it. He had no idea that it would be so beautiful. So many fish, so many beautiful things to see. He had seen it all before from the surface as he gazed into the clear tide pools, and he had seen it underwater without a mask, but this was like magic. He knew immediately that his life had changed. Now he could explore everything he'd always wondered about, perhaps even the secret place. Petrus spent the rest of the afternoon in the water, attempting to see everything there was to see. He marveled as schools of small silver fish circled around him. Dozens of colorful parrotfish swam by, followed by scores of others, some spotted, some striped, some large and some small. Every color of the rainbow was represented in this undersea world. He watched as a small octopus scurried under a rock. He saw a squid swish by and watched a jellyfish hang in suspended animation with their long tentacles flowing freely beneath them. He swam down and grabbed a large lobster just behind the grip of its open claws and he brought it to the surface. He considered taking it home for dinner but then decided to let it go. As the afternoon sun began to draw nearer to the sea, Petros realized that he had been in the water almost all day. There were chores to do at home, and he wanted to return before sundown. On the walk back up the mountain, he hid the mask in a hollowed-out tree stump where he knew that no one would find it. He covered it with twigs and leaves just to be sure. Though he never considered himself to be a secretive person, the new mask and his new undersea world were two secrets that he wanted to keep to himself, at least for now. He returned home to find the goats calling for their evening milking. Five of the twelve were freshened with milk. The others were either youngsters or bucks. He finished the milking, then gave each goat some grain and hay. He collected the eggs from the chickens, then returned to the small stone house. There he filtered the milk and put it, along with the eggs, into the cooler. Tomorrow they would be ready to sell at the morning market, along with some vegetables from the garden. Petros' mother returned from work and prepared a fine meal of calamari, fresh fish, and vegetables from the garden. She was a good cook, and Petros enjoyed her company. Though neither one said much, they both felt a very special bond between them. 
Since life on the island was simple, there really wasn't much to discuss. Petros really wanted to tell his mother what he had discovered, but he thought it best to wait. Since his father's death, she had never felt comfortable about him being near the water. He was all that she had. After the meal, Petros helped his mother clean the dishes, and shortly after, they both went to bed. He dreamed that night about all that he had seen during the day. The days that followed were full of adventure. His newly discovered undersea world never failed to entertain and amaze him. He wanted so badly to share the experience with someone, yet by doing so, he felt that he might lose it all. He didn't want to tell his mother, and the other boys in the village were mostly bullies who might just steal the mask if they found out. So for now, it remained Petro's secret. Late one morning, after all of the chores had been completed, Petros set out for his favorite cove. This time, Brown Dog followed him through the winding streets, all the way to the top of the mountain. When he got to the pass between the two boulders, Petros shooed the dog away back to the village. He thought that just maybe Brown Dog might later reveal his secret places to someone else. He could take no chances. He climbed down the rocks as usual, but halfway down, he was startled when he noticed a girl laying on the beach below. She looked beautiful laying there. Her body was the color of bronze and it glistened in the morning sun. Then he recognized her. Her name was Maria and she lived in the small village on the southern end of the island. She was a year older than Petros. Her older brother had been on the same boat as his father when it went down. They had stood next to each other at the funeral and had realized then that they had a special bond of which they would never speak. She was a beautiful yet quiet girl, who no one really knew very well. Petros quietly tried to climb back up the rocks to the other side when he was startled by her scream. Seeing him had startled her as well. I'm sorry, he said. I, I didn't know. Well, I'm sorry too. I thought I would be alone here, she said, annoyed by the sudden intrusion. Petros backed up a step and then said, I'll leave now, don't worry. Wait, please come down. I want you to promise me that you will never tell anyone that you saw me here. My father would never let me out of his sight again if he knew that I was near the sea alone. He still has nightmares about my brother. Sure, I understand. My mother's the same. Okay, I promise. What is that in your hand? She asked. A diving mask? Petrus had been so distracted by all that had just happened that he had completely forgotten about the mask. His secret was no longer a secret. Thinking quickly, he said, Maria, please, I've promised to keep your secret. Please keep mine as well. Promise me that you won't tell anyone about this mask or that you saw me here today. Please promise. I think we have a deal, Petros. I promise. They shook hands, and somehow Petros knew that he could trust her. Will you come here again? He asked, almost hopefully. I would like to, but... Don't worry, he said. If I see footprints in the sand, I'll call out a warning before I climb over the rocks. Fair enough, Petros. I'll do the same. He left with a lot on his mind. He didn't swim at all that day. He headed back to the village, and Brown Dog was waiting for him at the two boulders. A feeling of warmth and uneasiness followed him back down the winding streets to his house. He was troubled by the events of the day and was unsure of the emotions which held him in their grip. Two days passed and Petros did not go over the mountain. He longed for the sea and was anxious to use the mask again. Yet somehow he felt betrayed by it. Maria had seen it and now she knew his secret. The mask was no longer the secret. Maria was now the secret. He felt that he could trust her, but he really wanted to talk to her more about it. After all, he held her secret too. It seemed to him that the bond between them was now growing stronger. On the third day, Petros decided to swim to the secret place in the big rock. As he walked along the beach at Basili Amos, he saw no footprints. This was not unusual, but somehow he felt disappointed by it. He stopped in front of the big rock. It would only be a short swim. He placed the mask on his face and entered the water. The cool, clear water brushed against his skin as the mysterious undersea world once again opened its doors to him. The fish, the coral, 
and all of the colors of the rainbow surrounded him and swept him away into a world that few people really know. He felt as though he owned the sea. It was his alone. On the far side of the rock, Petrus found the secret opening. At low tide, a small part of the opening was above the surface, and the rest was below. He had seen it before, but was never brave enough to enter. He had been attracted to it while spearfishing, and he had seen what seemed to be a light shining beneath the surface. He had never had a clear view of it, but now, with the mask, he would be able to see what was there. The blue light beckoned him to enter. The sea was calm, and he dove down to discover that the hole was actually large enough to enter. But then what? Once he was in, would he be able to get out? And what creatures might be lurking in there? He dove down below the surface. For the first time, he could clearly see that the opening below the surface was huge. Carefully, he peeked inside. There was a large hollow area beneath the surface of the water that was somehow illuminated from above. Still, outside of the opening, Petros raced to the surface for a breath of air. On the surface, he contemplated his next move. Was it worth the risk? What was he trying to prove? He took three deep breaths, then made his descent. There was the hole. Almost before he realized it, he was inside. He was surrounded by blue. No artist could ever capture what Petros was now seeing. Slowly and carefully, he rose to the surface. He was now inside the rock. As he left the blue, wet underworld behind, he took a deep breath and gasped at what his eyes now saw. He was now inside a huge cavern, a room within the rock. He removed the mask and swam over to a wide ledge which spread itself out on one side of the cavern. He sat there for what seemed to be an hour. The cavern was nearly as large as his house. His voice echoed and sounded ominous inside the cavernous room. Near the top of the cavern, a large crack in the rock let in the sun's bright rays, which then sent a shaft of light straight to the bottom of the clear water. The light turned the water and the walls of the cavern to a deep turquoise blue. The effect was something that Petrus would never be able to describe. This was the ultimate secret, he thought to himself. Petrus spent several hours in the secret place, sometimes sitting on the ledge, sometimes diving with the mask into the cool blue water. It was getting late, and he knew that he should soon return to the village. He could not wait to return to the secret place. The next day, Petrus saw Maria on the way to the morning market. They both smiled politely, but did not speak at first. Then Maria turned quietly and said, Petros, will you show me how to use your mask? He was so surprised that at first he could not speak. Well, I, I didn't know that you, I mean, sure, I suppose so. His words surprised even himself. What was he getting himself into? They decided to meet that afternoon at the cove. Petros found Maria to be an excellent swimmer. She learned to use the mask with ease. Her reaction to this new world was the same as his. She was fascinated. Over the next two weeks, they returned to the cove almost every day, exploring the undersea world and the world around them. Theirs was more than a friendship. They both felt it. Until now, Petros had not told Maria about the secret place. Finally, he could wait no longer. He tried to explain about the cave, the ledge, the blue light. At first, she didn't believe him. Finally, he showed her the way. Maria wore the mask. Petros knew that he could easily swim there without it. They descended together. He grabbed her hand and brought her into the cave and up to the surface. The beam of light shone down on her face. Her smile lit up the room. This is amazing, she exclaimed. I really don't believe it. The cave had sat undiscovered for perhaps millions of years, and now it was theirs alone. It was their secret. It was the place where they would spend many days together, laughing, talking, and becoming close. Petros, promise me that you'll never tell anyone about this place as long as you live. I promise, he said. It was a secret worth keeping forever. As the summer months passed, the air and the water became colder. Maria and Petrus knew that the secret place would soon be out of reach until next summer. 
they made their plans. They continued to go there as often as possible and even took candles and straw mats into the cave. When they dried out, the mats provided a comfortable place on the ledge and the candles mixed with the blue light to provide an eerie yet homey glow. It was truly a special place and it was theirs alone. It was nearly November. The nights became colder and the winter storms had begun to blow in from the sea. The water became almost too cold to swim. Maria and Petros had not been to the secret place for over a week. On that day, Maria persuaded Petros to go one last time before winter set in. It wasn't difficult for her to talk him into it. The sea was noticeably rougher than usual, but they were both good swimmers. The cold water stung their skin and made it difficult to breathe. Maria wore the mask. They entered the cave as usual and swam to the surface. When they looked around, they both sensed that something was different. Then they noticed that their candles and straw mats were no longer there. Had someone else discovered their secret? It hardly seemed possible, but the thought of it sent a sudden chill through the both of them. They sat on the ledge until they dried off. The air inside the cave was now damp and cold, and the winter sun no longer provided the warm blue glow in the usual way. The seasons were changing. They both felt it. All of a sudden, without warning, the water inside the cave rose up, completely covering the ledge and nearly knocking the two of them off. So that was it. That's where the mats and candles had gone. Petros felt a sense of relief in knowing that their secret was still safe. Petros held Maria's hand. The mask held tightly in his other hand. Suddenly, they were startled by a loud roar, which was immediately followed by a huge wave that entered the cave. This time, they were both swept off the ledge. Petros found himself in a spinning whirlpool, the mask held tightly in his grip. Trying to keep his head above water, he called to Maria. She was clinging to a rock higher up in the cave. Another roar and another huge gush of water entered the cave and left as quickly as it had come in. This time, it took him under for what seemed like an eternity. When the water finally released its hold on him, he surfaced and gasped for air. He called out to Maria and then searched the walls of the cave. She was not there. Still clinging to the mask, he strapped it on his face and dove down into the icy water. The water was murky and dark. He could see nothing. He raced to the surface for air. Another wave entered. This time it smashed him against the wall, sending a paralyzing chill up his spine. He slowly regained his senses and dove toward the cave's opening. As the wave left, it pushed him out and down. He could feel the pressure in his ears as he continued to go down, down, deeper and deeper. Could this be the end, he wondered? Then the sea released its iron grip. He struggled with every ounce of strength to reach the surface before his lungs burst. He could see the top, but wasn't sure that he could make it. All of a sudden, everything started to go black. He felt a pounding in his ears, and stars swam around his head. Finally, he opened his eyes and found himself on the surface, exhausted and nauseated. He tried to cough up the seawater that filled his lungs. Then he remembered Maria. He called out to her. Nothing. Then he knew. Petrus returned home that night with yet another secret. This one was different, though. This one troubled him more than anything he had ever experienced. On his way up the trail, he left the mask in the hollow tree stump and covered it again with twigs and leaves. He knew that he would never use it again. He sat by the two boulders and looked out to the sea. He could see the huge rock where the secret place was. Tears welled up in his eyes. His head pounded. He sat there until it was dark, then slowly made his way through the winding streets down to his house. His heart was heavy and his mind was troubled. What should he do? He had promised Maria that he would never tell about the secret place, about them, and about their special relationship. He had promised her that it would always be their secret. But was it right? What would her family think when she didn't return home? He should tell someone. Or should he? He needed time to think. Petro sat up most of the night replaying the events of the day over and over in his head. He knew that he was lucky to be alive. Or was he? The morning light crept through his tiny window and he still had no answers. That morning, he walked the goats up to the two boulders. He sat and contemplated 
all that had happened, while the goats quietly foraged for food. He looked out at the sea and at the rock. Then somehow, he knew what he had to do. He must honor Maria by keeping the secret. And that's what he did. Two days later, a fisherman found Maria's sweater and handbag that she had left on the beach. From that, it was assumed that the girl had gone swimming alone and had never returned. What the fisherman didn't find were the two sets of footprints on Basiliamos Beach, which had long since been erased by the pounding waves. Petros could not bring himself to attend the memorial service. No one, in fact, ever really knew that the two of them had known each other. A simple memorial stone was placed in the cemetery where Petros would eventually go and spend quiet time with her. Many summers came and went. The boy became a man. The secret still burned in his heart, and he could never be sure that he had done the right thing. More summers passed, and the man grew old and gray. His mother had long since passed on, and now he was all alone in the world, except for his goats. Many of the villagers simply knew him as the goat man. Many people didn't even know his real name. He rarely spoke to anyone. With his thin white hair, thick white mustache, gray-brimmed cap, and his walking stick, he could be seen daily herding his goats through the village and up the trails to the mountains. They knew he was a bit odd, but they never knew why. It had been a cold, hard winter, but the days were now beginning to show signs of warmth. On Sundays, he went to the cemetery to spend time with those who had gone on before him. On this particular Sunday, he decided to walk the goats up to the two boulders. He had not been there for many years. He could not remember how long it had been since he had seen the other side of the island. He looked out once more to the place which caused his heart to burn for all of these years. He looked at the rock, and he remembered. A warm wind blew in from the sea over the rock and up the slopes of the mountain. It blew his thin white hair. He felt its warm embrace all around him. Then, almost as if she was standing right beside him, he could hear Maria's voice. He hadn't heard it in his mind for years, but now it was as clear as if she was right there. He could hear the voice saying, Petros, you did the right thing. You kept our secret. Somehow he knew. That night as he lay in bed, a vision came to him. It was a scene from a long time ago. He could see fish swimming all around him, and he could see and feel the beautiful underwater world once again. It was as clear as it had been when he was a boy. The coral, the rocks, the octopus, the lobsters, they were all there again for him to see. He knew what he had to do. The next day he walked alone to the boulders. He looked out past the rock to the turquoise sea. He followed the old path to the hollow log. He removed the twigs and leaves, and there it was. It filled him with a feeling of warmth when he reached down and held it again in his hands. He followed the trail down to the sea. He took off his shoes and walked barefooted across the white warm sand at Basili Amos. He climbed once again over the rocks. He sat on the shore and stared at the big rock. He watched for a long time as the gentle waves beat against the rock, turning the water from blue to white. He smelled the fresh salt air. He walked to the water's edge and laid the mask in the shallow water. It floated on the surface like a boat and slowly pulled itself out to sea. Then it was gone. He retraced his footsteps up the hill to the boulders. A warm breeze blew past him. He raised his arms to the sky and breathed in everything that was around him. It was going to be a beautiful day. It was the first day of summer.